What's up guys, to the average person, Drake is one of the biggest and most successful music artists of the 21st century. The Canadian rapper has captured the hearts of millions around the world. He's worth a reported $100 million. Oh, and has only sold over about like 95 million albums. But to many sports fans, Drake is kind of the sign that something bad is about to happen to an individual athlete or sports team. The official Toronto Raptors ambassador means well when it comes to showing his support for certain sports teams, just like the rest of us. But Drake may not realize just how much he jinxes all these teams he roots for. When it comes to sports curses, his ranks ahead of any championship hangover or the Kardashian curse, which probably wouldn't be too bad for the player that it's happening to, but you know, whatever. I mean, it's even worse than the Madden or Sports Illustrated cover jinx. Take a close look at Drake and you'll see the man seems to possess the incredible power to cause athletes and teams the big game. I'm Jason Biondo and today we present how Drake is a curse for all sports teams revealed. Make sure to subscribe to TPS and put on your notifications because we post videos every single day. Every day is a new video, so you should definitely subscribe. It's a really good idea. Go do it, definitely. Now, like Justin Bieber, it seems like Drake likes to flip-flop between new favorite teams. The man is seen wearing all different sorts of merchandise. But maybe Drake isn't a bandwagon fan as much as he knows his inner powers of influencing who will lose a big sporting event. We know not everyone is superstitious, but when a chain of uncanny coincidences continue to take place, you realize there truly is a curse. You just have to go through the long list of great teams that Drake has jinxed. Where can we start? Uh, well, Drake is a huge fan of the Kentucky Wildcats basketball team, but he hasn't had any championship glory to celebrate over the past half decade. Coincidence? We think not. I've been Steph Curry with the shot, been cooking with the sauce, Chef Curry with the pot, boy. Kentucky last won the national championship in 2012 when they defeated Kansas. Not only only have the Wildcats failed to win a championship since, but they've only made the NCAA tournament finals once. That was in 2014 when they lost to Connecticut 60 to 54. Furthermore, Kentucky failed to reach the final four in 2016, 17, and 18. All right, now it's not just about Kentucky simply failing to win championships, but this team has seen too many of their March Madness runs end early, and that's on Drake. Drake attended game seven of the 2013 NBA finals between the Miami Heat and San Antonio Spurs. He witnessed LeBron James take down the Spurs, clinching their second straight NBA championship and third overall since 2006. The rapping sensation then tried entering the Miami Heat locker room after the game, hoping to celebrate with the team. Security wouldn't let Drake in, and you can probably guess what happened next. No, this is media. media. Drake getting turned down. That's Drizzity Drake. The Heat reached the NBA Finals for a fourth straight year in 2014, meeting the Spurs once again. But Drake's curse hit the Heat hard. There were no match for an angry and star-studded Spurs team who easily brushed Miami Miami aside in five games. The curse didn't get as much attention compared to the others, but it's legit. Only if the Heat let Drake in, Miami may have won their third straight championship, and maybe LeBron never goes back to Cleveland. Now in 2014, Drake released his new hit song, Draft Day. And in the opening line, he mentioned Johnny Manziel and Andrew Wiggins, who were elite and hyped up NFL and NBA draft picks that year. Draft Day. Johnny Manziel, five years later, how am I the man still? A Wiggins, we stay winning. Manziel, of course, was the former Heisman Trophy winner at Texas A&M. He was drafted 22nd overall by the Cleveland Browns, who had hoped they found their new franchise signal caller. But Manziel's career in the NFL was very brief and left plenty to be desired. He played just 15 games over a two-year span and tossed seven touchdowns against seven interceptions. Manziel got in trouble for breaking curfew and was seen partying in Vegas rather than stay in Cleveland for a game. Manziel also got into trouble off the field with police, and the Browns had no choice but to release him in the 2016 offseason. Manziel now plays for Montreal CFL team, but who knows how long that will last for. As for Wiggins, the Cleveland Cavaliers took him first overall in 2014, but he was later traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves as part of the Kevin Love blockbuster. Although he was named 2015 Rookie of the Year, Wiggins had failed to blossom into a superstar, and reports have indicated that he's unhappy in Minnesota. The Timberwolves have been a mediocre team, even though they had high hopes that Wiggins would be a franchise-changing star. If Drake never mentioned his name in draft day, uh, perhaps Wiggins would have been an MVP and All-Star by now. But who knows? It's all part of the superstitious curse. Serena Williams was looking to win her fourth straight U.S. Open back in 2015. She was also trying to become just the fourth woman to accomplish the Grand Slam in a single year, having already won the Wimbledon, Australian Open, and the French Open. There was truly no stopping the GOAT of women's tennis. Or was there?
Prior to the tournament, Williams and Drake were seen hugging and kissing in public, and thus a new celebrity power couple was born. Drake was in attendance to support his girlfriend during the US Open as she looked to complete her aforementioned Grand Slam. But in one of the biggest upsets ever, Roberta Vinci took down Williams in the semifinals. Vinci got the job done in three sets as the unseated Italian underdog dashed Williams hopes of making history. Vinci would face Flavia Panetta in the finals but fell short. But hey, Vinci benefited big time from the Drake curse. His relationship with Serena didn't last too long and the only thing we remember is him simply cursing her chances at the Grand Slam. Now Drake is good friends with New York Giants star wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. In fact, Beckham told current WWE superstar Ronda Rousey in the 2016 offseason that he was living with the ultra beloved music artist. Well, Beckham and the Giants actually wound up making the playoffs in 2016 and he was named to his third Pro Bowl. But Beckham's 2017 season was cut short after he fractured his ankle, which required surgery. Beckham's season ended after five games and in 2018, Beckham tuned in another fine season. But the Giants finished 5-11, and last in the NFC East. What more can Drake possibly do to these people? I, I honestly don't get it. Like, like, just stop watching sports at this point, Drake. You're not helping anyone. In October 2018, Drake was seen hanging out with Conor McGregor, with the former even holding the Irish flag to show his support for the UFC star. Thing is, McGregor is kind of really good in the octagon and virtually unstoppable. So many fans and pundits brushed it aside and didn't think the Drake curse could possibly have any effect on Conor. Seriously, how could McGregor fall to Khabib Nurmagomedov at UFC 229? There was absolutely no way the Irishman was going to lose, right? But just when you thought McGregor would defeat Nurmagomedov for the UFC lightweight championship, he actually got beat up and lost via submission. And right away, we were all reminded about just how serious the entire Drake curse really is. McGregor fell in the fourth round and has been quietly out of the UFC spotlight ever since. Now, could hanging out with Drake simply destroy his MMA career altogether? That'd be pretty insane. All right, up next, let's get to the obvious one. Drake is a huge fan of his hometown team, the Toronto Raptors. The organization named him their global ambassador before the 2013-14 season. Drake received a key to the city and can often be seen sitting courtside and pumping up the Toronto crowd. It's wonderful stuff. The Raptors have made the playoffs every year since 2014, so you could argue that Drake actually brought good fortunes to the team. But I'm just saying, this Raptors team has underperformed in the postseason every single year. Five straight playoff berths from 2014 to 2018. Three 50-win seasons, and they've only reached the Eastern Conference Finals once. And that was in 2016. They were swept by LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers in the 2017 and 18 NBA playoffs. That's just terrible. Why else do you think the Raptors traded DeMar DeRozan in a package deal to land San Antonio Spurs star Kawhi Leonard? The Raptors kept choking in the playoffs and the front office had enough. Now we wonder if Leonard will ever be able to break the Raptors curse. Otherwise, their playoff shortcomings will always fall on Drake. <laughs> How else can you explain their annual meltdown in the postseason? Now before Alabama and Clemson met in the 2019 college football playoff championship game, Drake was seen donning a Crimson Tide hoodie. But guys, Alabama was the top ranked team and the defending champion. This game got off to a great start with Clemson and Alabama exchanging touchdowns twice in the first quarter. The Crimson Tide grabbed a 16 to 14 lead midway through the second quarter. Then the Drake curse hit hard and Alabama would not recover. Trevor Lawrence completely destroyed the Alabama defense. The rest of the way. Travis Etienne scored a pair of touchdowns before the end of the first half to put Clemson up by 12 points going into the break. And well, the Crimson Tide just weren't able to recover from a sloppy finish in the first half. Clemson added two more touchdowns in the third quarter and pulled away with an easy 44-16 victory. Even though Clemson was given a decent chance to win this game, nobody thought it would be a blowout. If anything, it was the Crimson Tide that we would have expected to win by 28 points. But the Drake curse infected Alabama and their title defense was nothing short of all around embarrassing. And of course, right after the loss, the Twitterverse let Drake hear it. All Drake had to do was probably just not show his support for Alabama before the game, and they could have won. But it wasn't meant to be, as Drake once again cursed one of his favorite teams and prevented them from winning at all. You doubters can deny the existence of the Drake curse all you want, but if Alabama's embarrassing loss in the national championship game isn't enough for you, then what is? Whether you're superstitious or not, history and evidence are tough to ignore when it comes to the Drake curse. No matter how great
great an athlete is and no matter how dominant a team is, he has always found a way to curse them. Simply showing up at games, hanging out with the players, or wearing team merchandise. That's about all it takes for Drake to curse a team. But if recent history is an indication of anything, Drake just doesn't care. He's going to do everything in his power to shake the curse. But why should we believe it'll ever end? Just ask all of these teams who continue to get jinxed anytime Drake shows his support for them. This is one celebrity fan that no athlete or team should ever go near. Like ever. You know, I kind of feel like maybe he's like tricking all of us. Like he knows there's a curse, but he's like picking the teams that he actually doesn't want to win. Maybe he didn't want Alabama to win and he wore their jersey and really wanted Clemson. Like you can't say much for the Raptors, but like, I don't know, maybe he knows there's a curse if he wears a certain jersey or something. That'd be cool. I don't know. Just a theory. What other athletes and teams have been a victim of the Drake curse? Who do you think will fall victim to the curse next? Join us in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and Total Pro Sports on social media. We post great content all the time. All the time. Great content. At least go check out our profile. You're like, oh, I like that Instagram. Oh, that's a pretty cool tweet. And if you like it, follow us. And if you don't, don't follow us. Either way, we appreciate you. We also appreciate likes. So if you like this video, give it a like right down below. It takes one click. That's all you gotta do. And if this is your first time around TPS, make sure to subscribe because we post videos every single day. Every day is a new video, so you should definitely subscribe. Of course, thanks so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo, and I'll see you next time. My knee!